Hello, dear listeners. Welcome to the ECM podcast. I'm Caroline Fontagneux, and I'm very happy to host this series that will take you behind the scenes of new music on ECM Records. In this new episode, I'm meeting Enrico Rava and Fred Hirsch, respectively in Milano and in Pennsylvania, to discuss over Zoom their duo project The Song Is You, produced by Manfred Eicher. We talked about friendship in music, the dynamic of this duo, and the music they love to play together. First, I wanted to know how this collaboration started. We, we, we met him the first time in Pescara last summer, and uh, that was the first concert we played. And we didn't have time to make rehearsal, do you remember, because we got to the place too late or something like that. And so we maybe we stayed there 15 minutes, and then the next day we, we did a concert. And I personally, I know that you had you didn't like it that much, but I, I really loved the concert. I still remember it. And then from that moment, I said, okay, that's, that's, there's going to be a future with this duo. Of course, I've been aware of Enrico for a very long time. You know, I can consider him what I call European jazz royalty, you know. And as I got to know him, you know, I discovered uh, the incredible wealth of experience that he's had in every possible kind of music. And I think from the first time that we played... We played three concerts ago, and uh, I think by the third one, for sure, they got better and better. And I think by the third one, for sure, I said, I really want to keep doing this. And uh, what I love about it is uh, what I call the deep listening that happens. Uh, we both have a lot of experience. We don't really have much of a plan when we do things. I think our sounds work very beautifully together. Um, sometimes I feel when I'm playing with Enrico, I'm playing with the world's hippest singer, the way that he plays the melodies. Everything is open. I mean, we can change the time. We can play open music. We can create arrangements on the spot. And uh, I will share that the night before the recording, so we played in July, and then there was a very big gap. Enrico went under, had some health issues. And so we didn't even meet until November, the day before the recording. And we rehearsed in a really small, dead studio. Uh, Enrico hadn't played for a while with another human being. And he was, he was thinking, oh, I can't do this. This is depressing. It's going to be terrible. And then we went into a beautiful uh, studio at the Swiss Radio in Lugano. And I remember you sat down on the stage and you played one note and you went, okay, And then we did basically the record in a manner of four hours or something like that. Uh, the second day, maybe we got one or two pieces, but something I'll always remember that Enrico said to me, and I say this now to myself, I always think I have to keep playing different repertoire, writing new pieces, you know. And he said, it doesn't matter what you play, it's how you play it. There's always room to play even something you wrote again and again. And it's always new. And uh, I feel like with this duo, that's really the case. So you met in July, 15 minutes before the first show. How did you agree on the repertoire? What did you talk about? Were just like, let's do this standard in that key? Or did you decide that on stage? Or like, how did that happen? Well, it was, it was very easy because uh, we, we both know a, a lot of standard. I think Fred know much more than me, but I know pretty much a lot of standard too. Then there was some Fred tune that I really liked to play. And uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to play that I wrote. And, but it was, everything was so easy. It's very difficult to, 
to explain because was, there was no, no any kind of hassle. It was so easy, everything. So, okay, let's, uh, do you know Old David Moon? Yes, I like it. Okay, let's play Old David Moon. Can I? There was no, no any kind of problem, never, because I felt from the very first moment, and I feel it now even more, that when, when I play with Fred, I, I really, we go beyond the, the, the note, you know, the style or whatever it is, or the kind of standard we play or whatever. I feel it's a conversation like between our soul, you know what I mean? That, that's really, I know it sounds a little bit, but it's true. I really feel so close to musically to, to, to Fred. In fact, uh, I have an image that I like very much. That, that, that in the moment he played the first note, you know, I feel like he invited me to his flying carpet. So I jump on this flying carpet and we start flying and we can go everywhere. We, 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 you know, even for the record, we, we didn't make a, you know, we didn't decide really a repertoire before because I think, for instance, the way we played the, uh, the song is you. I think it's the first tune we recorded that, that morning. I just was feeling so good with this this uh, auditorium, no, with the, the, the sound, the acoustic in the studio. That I start improvising, and Fred start conversation this conversation with me, and then eventually I start playing the head of the song is you as a ballad, and there was this beautiful chords that, that Fred lay. And I mean, it was. But there wasn't something really prepared, you know, it just happened. Or there was a tune that I really like, which is a, a improvisation, which is really an improvisation. I started yeah. playing a few notes, like do 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 and he started doing something. It was like, you know, uh, difficult to explain. It was so fantastic. Yeah. Really, really spontaneous composition, uh, I think, you know, both of us agree there's an open improvisation on that album which in some ways is a highlight. We're really composing on the spot. A beautiful thing for me uh, as I've gotten older, I mean, I'm not, I'm 66, so uh, I'm not as ancient as Enrico. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, You're a kid. You're a kid. Yeah, I'm a kid. But, you know, uh, the beauty of live recording is really where I've been living now for the last number of years. I hate playing with headphones. So the way that we recorded just felt like playing a gig and the audience was the acoustics, was the hall. That's, you know, we were playing to the hall and to each other. And when we're going to play something, whatever it is, I just literally put my hands down. I don't really think about it too much. And I know that Enrico is going to come in just in the right way. I think most of what we do has a very spontaneous sense of architecture about it. I feel like when I'm playing a solo, I can feel Enrico really with me. I love to play duos. I've made tons of duo albums. One of the things I like to do is orchestrate and use the whole piano, both as like a big drum set, a big band, an orchestra, or just maybe a, another horn player, uh, textures to surround and set off what he's doing. Also the freedom of working with Manfred, which was my first experience with him, which was delightful, was that, you know, there was no vibe like, okay, this has to be five minutes or, you know, it's like whatever the music needs, just do it and don't think about it. And in fact, at the end of the album, there's even a solo piano piece, which you don't really expect on a duo album. But I just started to play it and said, okay, let's do that. And it was really fun uh, creating it on the spot. And uh, I too think it's one of the better things um, that I've done in my career. I'm very, very proud of it.
I like, Enrico, that you talked about a conversation because it doesn't feel like people are like both of you are taking solo one after another you know it's not like about soloing one after another it's yeah. really a conversation you're accompanying like each other there's something very balanced but it requires a lot of trust and does trust um build throughout the time or is it something that you find spontaneously when you meet the person which happened to you in the summer and then you were like wow I trust this person I trust them musically I can do anything no the the thing is that uh, I always say that, that the most important thing also when uh, when I put a band together with my band they have to be okay they have to they must be good musician okay but they must be the right people for me you know Uh, I played with the millions of people, including a lot of duos. Uh, not not always it works like that. No, it, with with Freddie, it's really a very special thing because I think we are the right person to play together. That that that's, we are the two right persons to play together. Because I must tell you, I for instance, I did uh, uh, also duo records, etc., with very very good piano players, etc. But I never had this feeling, you know what I mean? This, this uh, feeling so close uh, and so much beyond, you know, beyond the, the fact that we are playing a tune or not, that we are improvising or we are not, we are playing a standard or a tune of our, it's, it's really beyond that. It's like we are talking on a different level, you know, beyond the music in a way, you know. There's a connection in the souls. There is a connection in, in connection, the... Like, like uh, as you well know, like Bruce, Bruce said, talking about sound, you know, about the sound of violin player, no? When he played the Sonata of Vinteuil, he, he talked about this sound, it's a beautiful sound, but not because it's a beautiful sound, but because it's the sound of his soul, of the soul of the guy. And this, for me, is the main thing. When I, when I hear, when, 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 when Fred laid down a few notes just as an intro to something, I really feel that he's putting his soul over there, not just playing beautiful, beautifully some notes. Is there, is, is, is a really, It's something that connects me with my my interior balance and consequently also with the the universe balance. <laughs> I don't know how to say yeah. it. it sounds a little bit no. that. It's it like, makes it yeah. it's, it's way beyond it's way beyond technical match. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I you know, I've pretty much always been this way, but certainly in the last in the last chapter of my life, after a very, very serious illness and a couple of comebacks, I really feel that, you know, without the emotional depth, you know, I, I, I don't really, I want that experience. When I play music, I want to feel something and I want people to feel something. And I agree with Enrico, there's a sort of a soul connection and a love, level of love that we have for each other and what we do together. It is beyond uh, the notes. And I think it has to do with the quality of listening and that with all the experience we have, there are no boundaries. And uh, my goal is to keep this old guy playing for a while, keep him going. We want Enrico to keep playing as much as, as he can. And uh, I'm hoping for this duo to be an ongoing thing for uh, as long a time as possible. Sometimes we've gotten to a, a gig, a situation, and the, the hall is maybe a little dead or the acoustic is not so favorable. We do a sound check. Maybe we get frustrated. Then we, okay, relax. We come back. And some of those have been the best concerts because we just, we just trust. Yeah. Happen in front of an audience that don't happen when you're on a stage doing a sound check. You know, you can get you can get annoyed about what it isn't, and then you take a break and you come back and you play what it is, and it can be absolutely some of the best stuff.
I'd like to just say that I think it's funny. We were sort of meant to meet each other at this yeah. time. You know, if this was 10 years ago, I'd be thinking about it as a gig. And I don't think about it as a gig at all. I, I think about it as joy and inspiration and fun and deep uh, emotion. And, you know, I don't feel like I have to impress anybody. I think the fact that we're meeting each other at this time is, is really significant. And some, okay, I'm in New York, Enrico's in Milan, you know, it's hard to get together, but, but it's something that I want to make a priority uh, going forward. That's great. So I just, I just want to go back for a second about the repertoire of the album, because we have those standards, but we also have uh, one original from you, Fred, and one original from you, Enrico. Um, you were in the studio uh, in Lugano. Did you both like bring the material for those for those things, or did you know each other's composition before because you had recorded those uh, in the past? How did you build uh, this idea? Talking about Chai song for Fred and the trial for you. Let's see, Chai song we we were playing in the con we played that in in concert or every. Concert we play, we, we play the one, but I like it a lot. And I like it particularly because after the head, after the theme, most of the time Fred play like a little rhythm on a high note and make me feel like play the title of the song, which is like, make me feel to play childish lines, you know, and then maybe develop into something else. And in that particular thing, I remember very well that I started really with childish melodies. And then after a while, I started building, building up. At a certain moment, Fred let me alone. So I started doing a very free thing. And uh, I, I think it worked very well, you know. But anyway, this is the tune you were playing all the time. My tune, The Trial, just before we recorded, Fred said, why don't we do the, I start improvising on that, on the, on the and then we, we, we jo you join me, we play together, we play the head. In fact, that would happen and work perfectly. The tune lasts only two minutes, I think, or something like that, two minutes and a half. And we play the head once at the very end. And the rest, we, we I felt a little bit like uh, <clears throat> something I was listening when I was 16 years old, which was the Jerry Mulligan. Chet Becker Quartet, 1952, but they were improvising together. It were like a contrapunto, I would say. Counterpoints. Counterpoint. Yeah. I felt a little bit like that, you know, when I joined Fred in improvisation. But that was decided on the spot, you know. First of all, decided on the spot to play it and how to play it because I think when we play a couple of times in some concert, usually we were playing the head, and then I play my solo, he plays solo. This time he had this idea, just one second before we start. Why, why don't I just play, start playing, and you join me? So he said, yes, a good idea. And I think Manfred mm. liked it too a lot, so everybody was happy. <laughs> I, I like often to play the theme at the end to kind of start in a more abstract way and then reveal the melody as you and reveal the rhythm and reveal the melody as you get further and further into it. Um, I find that sometimes when you play the melody first, then you're very conscious of, now I'm going to take a solo. So if you just start like you drop the needle in the middle of a solo and then you heard the melody at the end, Uh, and I think actually we tried it twice. The first time we started improvising together. For some reason, it didn't work. I said, okay, I got this. Let me just play a single line. You come in when you want. Even though it's two minutes, it feels very satisfying. It's a really nice moment on the album. It's kind of like a palate cleanser.
Fred, it's it's your first collaboration with ECM. Tell me about it. Wow. I mean, I wish every recording I made was this easy. Um, you know, we were just, as I said, just playing on the stage in this beautiful hall. I felt that Manfred was super supportive and really happy. I didn't feel like I had to worry about anything. The way that he and Stefano Mario, the engineer, worked together is just such a seamless team. We had a lot of really good times. I think growing up with the very first ECM records, I mean, I really listened to the very first ECM records in 19, the early 1970s. It's always been kind of a dream to do a project for ECM. Uh, maybe there would be more, but if not, this was a really good one. It was very nice to, to come into ECM in a very organic way. I think if I would have pestered Manfred to make a recording or sent a demo or tried to politic my way into the family, uh, it would not have been the same. But I think, you know, I think, I hope, I think Manfred and I realized, you know, yeah, we should really work together. And I do hope it happens. But my experience was really positive, super relaxed. It was really fun. I mean, it was really happy. And that's a really great memory. Enrico, you have an amazing story, like very long history with ECM. It's been almost 50 years that you've been working with Manfred Aisha. How was it and how is it now? How has it evolved since The Pilgrim and the Stars in 75? And what's your relationship with ECM? Well, first of all, uh, in 73, I was living in New York, but I made the record with John Abercrombie, Chip White and Bruce Johnson for for a German label called BASF, B-A-S-F. And the record uh, was really successful also in England, had a beautiful... Uh, and I think Manfred liked it a lot. In fact, about a year later, he was in New York and he called me and offered me to, to record for, for, since he liked very much that record, he looked for me and I thought it was a beautiful chance for me. So. I started recording with Abercrombie, Paradise, and Song Young Christensen, my first album for Manfred. Since then, I made many records for first Manfred. And to play, to be with Manfred, it means, first of all, the best studio, the best piano, if you need a piano, the best engineer, the best uh, artistic producer, which is Manfred himself which is a musician, and this makes a difference because when, when he say the tune is, is good and you don't need to make it all over again, it means that it's good because it's the opposite of many, when I did all those records for other, other company, it's exactly the opposite. When they tell you, nah, this one didn't come out well, that means that it was perfect. And vice versa, they say, oh, this is beautiful. Okay, let's let do it again. With Manfred, no, you know, he's, he's, he's always on the case. You know what's happening. In, once I remember we were, I don't remember, we were recording in New York uh, with James Farber. I don't know, maybe it was a trio with Bolani and Paul Motion or was New York Days with Mark Turner. And, and anyway, <clears throat> uh, I couldn't get the right sound in my earphones, you know, and, but after, half an hour that I tried it, I said, okay, forget it. And I played with this. But after uh, about one hour, Manfred said, Enrico, I see you a little bit unhappy. What, what is wrong with you? He said, well, I'm not happy with my sound in my earphones. So, okay, he went himself to the, to the console, ta, 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 in two seconds, I got exactly what I wanted. And this is the big difference between, you know, Manfred and other, guys that produce records. With Manfred, you are the best of it. And then you have the best distribution. This is another last but not least, the good distribution because you can make some beautiful album, but if the, if the distribution is bad, uh, you know, it doesn't, you can just stay home and, and make it for your family, you know? So, so this is, is a, 
So I was very happy that we start again and, and, and the, the, the rapport was so good and, and it's still very good. And, but particularly I was very happy in this record because I, I felt, I knew that he was really happy. He liked it a lot. And uh, I, in all these years, I saw him very happy many times, but I don't think I saw him very often so enthusiastic about, about uh, something that I did. Maybe never uh, before. So uh, I was happy, really happy. Also because it was the first time that Fred recorded for Marvel. I knew I was sure that from then on he was going to be on the spot for Manfred Eicher because Fred is unique, for instance. Enrico Rava and Fred Hirsch about their duo ECM record, The Song Is You. Thank you for joining, choosing, and listening to our ECM podcast. I'm Caroline Fontagneux, and I look forward to sharing more music with you in the next episode.